So the final short phase or short exercise is talking about what we do once the project is finished and we want to export the results. Well, there's a variety of options here. Um, the first one is to look under, simply look under the export um, dialog. And here we can see there are some options to export these models to GIS, to text, land XML, all the uh, ones you'd expect, including to CAD. Now, what we need to emphasize here is that at this stage, we're just creating DWG files. The future is going to be a comprehensive round trip from Civil 3D coming out to infra drainage temporarily to do a hydraulic design and then back to Civil 3D to hold all our data, incorporate into a BIM environment and that kind of thing. So we have these simple options at the moment. So like I say, the future is, is this round trip from Civil 3D. And if we look in Civil 3D briefly, we can see that there is an info drainage plugin. It's a separate installer from the main info drainage installation. But once you have that in association with Civil 3D, you would create your models here or create your data here, um, create your parts list, you know, in association with your catalogs. And then there would be an export to info drainage to do your hydraulic design and then bring it back from info drainage to hold it, as I say, within the BIM environment. So that's something which we're currently working on. We have done some work already. There is a YouTube video. The address is included in the notes and I'll just show it briefly there. So that's our, going to be our recommended approach is, is, like I say, holding the data in Civil 3D and just coming out temporarily to info drainage. The other method of um, exporting the results is printouts. Now, those of you coming from a micro drainage background will be very familiar with that. It was an integral part of, it, of micro drainage. Often approving authorities would depend purely on the printouts to, in order to do the audits. It has to be said that with info drainage now, there is much less emphasis on printouts, but still we've got all the functionality that was available within micro drainage. So you just go to file and print, and then uh, you get this extremely customizable dialog um, where you choose exactly what you want in your report. And the key thing here is to provide only the information that you need. Otherwise, you can get completely deluged with information, just have far too much. So providing too much information in, in many cases is as bad as providing not enough information. So here's the recommendations for printouts, what we suggest you include. Firstly, look at the phases. Now, remember there were four phases that we used eventually. I'll just show those. So we had the various different designs that we're working on, and it ended up with the optimized SUDS design. So when we go to the printout, we can choose which phases, and the suggestion is that probably you just need the final one that you're working on. Similarly with the events, you probably just need the critical storms. You don't need all storms. After that, you look at the um, which items from the model do you need. So you probably need details of the junctions, in other words, the manholes, you're likely to need details of the stormwater controls, the connections, usually the pipes, but all, all connections. Um, you've got the inflows here where you can provide a variety of information for each individual inflow. But in the majority of cases, you're just going to need to have the inflow summary. So it's all presented in just one table. That's all you're going to need. Um, you're also going to need the outfall details and the analysis criteria, uh, very simply, which rainfall you used. So it's going to be presented like that. Um, once you've got that, you choose um, which results you want to present. And you can have all items per storm or all storms per item. And again, it's a question of how much data you need. I would say in the majority of cases, you just need all items per storm. So it's going to give you the critical event and the worst um, you know, the worst critical event for each pipe, for each uh, junction, for each stormwater control structure. And again, you probably don't need everything. This can result in hundreds of pages of graphs and tables. You can get everything you need from this. But in the vast majority of cases, you just need the summaries. Um, just the how junction summary to, for example, show what the maximum level was in each manhole the uh, connection summary, the maximum velocities and flows, all that kind of information. So these are the tick boxes which we recommend. Um, you would 
uh, hopefully give you, like I say, all the data you need, but no additional data that you don't need. What you do then is um, press this update preview button and it goes away and generates the report. So depending on how many options you've ticked, it can take uh, several seconds. But in this case, you can see it's very quick and it's produced 22 pages of the various results. So it gives you details of the junctions, the connections, the stormwater controls, and then further on down, it gives you the results associated with them. So that's all there is to it.